So let's get this perspective from Greece now. We can cross live to Athens and talk to Professor George Pagolatis, who's a senior advisor to the Greek Prime Minister. Good evening to you. First of all, are you confident that the bailout package for Greece will tonight be approved in Brussels? Well, I think we can be cautiously optimistic if we uh, judge from the statements that have been already made uh, by uh, leaders in the Eurozone or the IMF, and also the fact that Greece has met all the preconditions that uh, have been set by our partners uh, in, as preconditions for getting this loan. Uh, the, 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 the conditions have passed uh, Parliament with a two-thirds majority. Um, the country has bridged uh, the financing uh, uh, gap in its budget that was uh, necessary uh, in order to be able to comply with the fiscal targets. Uh, and uh, the political leaders have given all the assurances uh, signifying their commitment to follow this conditionality program uh, for the next few years. So I think we have all the conditions on the ground uh, to move on with the PSI and the loan agreement as uh, stipulated by the October 26 uh, agreement of the European Council. So why does it, uh, is it taking so long? You could say, we, we know that the, the Greek finance minister, Evangelis Venizelos, has said that he imagines that the haggling will go on to the last minute. What do you think that haggling is about? Well, it could be about fine-tuning some of the terms of the agreement. It could be about some remaining details uh, regarding the specifics. But overall, I think uh, we are bound to expect uh, an agreement uh, tonight. I would be surprised if we didn't, but we, we should always be cautious in our optimism. Uh, when you say optimism, how important do you think it is for Greece? It's extremely important because Greece has been in a recession over the last uh, few years. We've lost about 15% of our GDP. Uh, and this recession, of course, is the inevitable. To one degree, it's an inevitable result of the uh, fiscal consolidation that has taken place uh, and the effort to reduce the trade deficit. These policies uh, have a recessionary impact. By the way, this is the largest fiscal consolidation that has ever taken place over the last 30 years in any Eurozone country. Uh, eight percentage points of the GDP in terms of primary budget uh, has been reduced, uh, 20 billion. Uh, this amounts to 4% of GDP every year. So these policies are obviously policies that are not contributing to a, to a st stimulating growth. Clearly we have a recession problem, we have a problem on employment, but the main reason for that is the instability that surrounds the Greek economy, and this is largely the result of the uh, uh, instability going on about and the un in uncertainty and insecurity regarding a, a, a possible default or even a, uh, what has been uh, alleged as a threat of uh, Greece's exit from the Eurozone. We will touch firm ground after this agreement, and this will allow the necessary preconditions for uh, gradually restoring growth to the Greek economy. But Germany made it clear last week that it wanted greater cooperation between Athens and Brussels as a precondition of this bailout. We've also hearing today that the Dutch finance minister is pushing for the Troika to take some sort of permanent control of, of Greece's finances as well. I mean, is Greece master of its own destiny once it's signed up to this bailout package? Greece has subscribed to this uh, bailout package uh, by itself because it wants to seal, to consolidate its position in the euro. And this is the necessary price we have to pay uh, to put order in our public finances, to implement the necessary structural reforms that will increase the competitiveness of our economy. We have uh, gained 50% in terms of unit labor costs of the competitiveness lost between 2000 and 2008. We've regained it within the last two years. We are catching up. And when we have the necessary preconditions of stability, uh, we will be able to gradually enter a positive growth rate and start benefiting from the um, ad uh, advantages of greater competitiveness and the structural reforms that have been taking place over the last few years. And yet, as you know, some people will say the way to really be competitive is to come out of the euro and then you can devalue, take the drachma back and, and devalue your currency. Well, I think I, I've been obviously reading about that. This is a hugely flawed uh, account. It's based on a very poor analysis. Uh, I've never, I haven't seen a serious economic analysis that has convinced me that exiting the euro would be to the better um, interest of Greece, of the Greek economy. Uh, the, um, there would be 
the, the value of bank deposits would be eradicated, real incomes would steeply decline, the economy will be entangled in vicious spirals of, of hyperinflation, the instability would uh, make any longer term investment decisions impossible, uh, and the country would lose roughly everything that it has gained over the last 30 years in terms of belonging to the core of European Union institutions. That would not just be bad for Greece, by the way, uh, that would also be bad for the Eurozone. And the reason why the European um, Union uh, councils and the Eurozone councils over and over again have used, have uh, resorted to measures of stabilizing the crisis and, and uh, extending financial support to Greece is because they realize that the exit of any country from the Eurozone would be the beginning of, uh, of the end, it would be the beginning of the unraveling of the Eurozone. The countdown would start uh, and the speculation would start on who would be next and there would be vicious repercussions for the entire Eurozone. Are you not worried about uh, scenes on the streets in Athens, though? We've seen protests, violent protests, again this week. You're just going to get more of the same with this bailout package and the conditions attached, aren't we? There's no doubt this is an extremely painful adjustment program. It is the second uh, package, the second uh, austerity program, not just austerity, but also structural adjustment program that, is, that, that has passed since uh, the last few years. Uh, people have lost, uh, working people have lost from 15 to 30 percent of their uh, nominal income. Uh, the tax burden has increased and the unemployment toll is near 1 million. That's uh, 20 percent of the labor force. Um, so it is clear that this is not a popular program. However, uh, the unpopularity of the program is offset by the commitment of the vast majority of the Greek society, that is 7 out of 10 Greeks, to remain within the euro. Uh, and to, to do whatever it takes and to pay whatever price it takes in order to remain in the euro for the exact reasons that I outlined before, that the alternative would be far more catastrophic. Professor Pagalatis, really interesting to hear your views tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.